fourth and five. Everybody looking at you. Everybody in your eyes, like, what is the temperature of VY? If he's cool, calm, and collect, then we all can be. You know, my guys looked up to me, so I can't show them that, because I am nervous. <laughs> I'm scared as shit. Step in the huddle like it was regular. Hey, let's go, guys. Let your nuts hang. Let's go. Fourth and five, the national championship on the line right here. He's going for the corner. You know, they kind of leave it as Vince Young was a bus. But they don't know I went through some stuff. That's my baby boy. He was a little plump, had a little curly hair, a little Vincent. I'm the baby boy. They call me Bubba. Hey, Bubba. <laughs> I was a working mom, and I took care of my kids, but I struggled. I didn't have a father figure in my life, and my mom was strung out on drugs for a long time. I got off into alcohol, drugs, and crack cocaine, and that whole nightlife. While they slept, I was out because my mom was home. I mean, I remember it like it was yesterday. My mom having parties. So we had a hole in the door, and she didn't know that I used to poke that little thing out to see. I used to be looking at them like, what is going on, you know? You're not supposed to see that type of stuff, you know? But I did. Mom, them arguing, yelling, fighting, and party going on. I used to climb through my window and go in the tree and be at peace. That was his face. That's where he was in that tree. That's where he did all his dreaming. Hey, what's up, Ace Time? Hey. Texas. Hey, represent. I remember just watching them was all this growing up, man. I was that kid was like, literally like stuck on TV like this, watching the game. Oh, Lorenzo White, Ernest Givens, Warren Moon lit it up. I had to work at a young age. I was working at the carnival. When you work in that Astrodome, you just know the secret areas. I had an opportunity, so I snuck into the Astrodome. <laughs> I think it was the best moment ever, just out there enjoying it, especially coming from the hood, the lifestyle I was living. I remember that number nine walking up in there. Alcorn, number nine, Steve McNair, I remember, I was there. You know, you never know what you're doing to people while you're out there playing ball. Like, I saw Steve, and that's when that era was, all these people was telling me, you know, African Americans uh, quarterbacks are not smart enough to play that position. Motivated the shit out of me, man. And I remember I used that every day. Like, I'm gonna get the last laugh because People told me I can't. My escape was football. Just, you know, for that three hours, took your mind off all the other stuff that was going on in your life. My sophomore year, a close family member of mine rented a van and took us to the camp in Mississippi. And to meet him personally, it was like the best moment ever, you know. He didn't have his father figuring his life, so he kind of saw me in him, and he took me underneath his wing, man, and the rest was history. A lot of times people don't understand where I be coming from, like for him just to answer his phone when I called at any time, I thought that was awesome, you know what I mean? Like, I was like the credit card holder holding his card, like at different events. <laughs> Hey, go talk to my son, he got you. And kind of like his designated driver. 16, 17 years old, I'm driving to Bentley. He like, hey, y'all see me, baby? <laughs> I got MVP of his camp, and I think that's when I really knew that I had an opportunity and a chance to, to do something special. So those letters started to come in from Florida State, Notre Dame, Arkansas but they was all talking about receiver. I told Coach Brown, like, Coach, if you think about bringing me to Texas to play wild out, 
you're gonna lose me. And our and coach was like, nah, we trying to bring you to Texas to play quarterback. And that and that's kind of the rest was history after that. <laughs> I was doubted all my life, you know what I mean? People telling me I wasn't going to college, I wasn't smart enough, you know, that's all I heard growing up. For me to be a Houstonian and a Texas native, and to play at the University of Texas, I think we haven't won a championship like in 30 some years. To be at the Rose Bowl game, again, like I'm not supposed to be there. I'm Vince Young from the neighborhoods I'm from, seeing my house being shot up, seeing my mama struggling, me, to be that leader, that quarterback of that team at that moment. I'm not only representing myself, I'm representing the entire state of Texas. You know, the only thing you can do is like, just take a deep breath for <laughs> like what I'm doing here. Fourth and five, the national championship on the line right here. He's going for the corner, he's got it! Invincible! Pop came and uh, enjoy that moment with me to win a national championship and have him there. You can't take that away, you know, like, I just remember all that, why everybody was out there yelling and partying. I didn't go nowhere, I didn't do nothing. I talked to him and we was talking about my future, like should I go to the draft or should I stay? It was a whirlwind for me, like just about all over the world from a little hood kid to being on that post stool. You know, coming off that Rose Bowl game, I was the man. I had an opportunity to bring my entire family to New York. We all in the limo, making snow angels, all the stuff you see on TV. It was a crazy, like, dream memory for me. I always wanted to do something different for my family to get us out of that lifestyle. I used to sit in a tree and think about those things. It actually came true. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. It was always something. Being a poor family, never had millions. My family wanted more and more and more, you know? And then you got my finance advisor, they doing all kinds of stuff. And then I gotta deal with football. I gotta deal with the world telling me I'm not a good quarterback. I felt like the media was against me. And I can't fight the media. Once the media say something, that's what the people think. They didn't know all the other shit that I had going off the field that was stressing the shit out of me. You know, the blessing part was Steve. So anything that I had question-wise, I could just call Steve. And Steve would always just say, man, just go back to work with a smile on your face. Kill him with a smile. Even though all that's going on, my hero, man, to, to play against him, how does that stuff happen? You know what I mean? Like, it happened though. And Steve did Steve. Drove down last minute, back in the end zone, touchdown, won the game. And all the pictures, the media around us, and me and him talking, and he patting me on my head. I'm like, Pop, why you couldn't let me win that, baby? Like, no, sir. <laughs> he was saying he was going to go fishing that weekend. And I was like, man, I'm going to Cancun, so I'll see you when I get back. And the first thing I heard when I landed in Cancun, was Pop gone? I'm like, Pop gone where? He went fishing? He told me he was going fishing. No, Pop gone, Pop dead. I was like, what? I knew that he loved him and looked at him like he was a dad. We were all devastated. He kept it in. It's not a good place to have when you battling something that you need to express yourself. It needs to come out, um, and I'm pretty sure today is still tender. My hero, man, is going. Now, hero's not supposed to die. When Steve died, 
I was lost. But I didn't have nobody to talk to, so I was kind of by myself. When I was playing in the NFL, man, they, they took the fun out of the game. That's why I retired. That's why I left the game. It was more politics. Don't nobody want to play football, and it's all about all that extra shit. Everybody was pointing the finger at Vince Young, calling him dummy and calling me names. Stuff that I had to deal with, you know, that they didn't care about my feelings or thoughts at all. You know what I'm saying? Those people feel like they're getting to me. And it happens to some people. And that's why it's sad because some of those guys commit suicide, you know what I mean? You know, a lot of that stuff happens because of the pressure of the lifestyle and what they're, you know, being given and been taken away. I actually was an NFL quarterback in this lifetime and it don't seem like it. You know, they kind of leave it as Vince Young was a bust. That stuff don't really matter to me. I know what I did. Courses change, directions change, but we still can be used. We still can go back to our neighborhoods and pull that same child like Steve did Vincent that needed a father figure, a brother, an uncle, you know, somebody close enough to say the right thing to that child for the dream to begin. Time out, baby. You got on field, bro. No, nah, but what you did good, though. You didn't run to the side, you went upfield. What you talking about, baby? Baby, you gotta have fun, baby. It's all right, baby. Whatever happened, put it in the past. Move on. I still look at it as a blessing, man. I'm living the life. And yes, that stuff was tough, but you never know what can happen. God can bring you out of here any moment, so you gotta enjoy life no matter what you are going through. No matter what. Because it's always another day.